Hi, I'm John Hornick. Welcome to Lesson 13 of Chef's Apprentice, Learning to Cook Like a Pro, One Small Plate at a Time. This lesson is braised pork and cocotte. This dish is similar in technique to the braised dishes we've already prepared and will bring together and reinforce the techniques you have already learned. Here you will braise pork shoulder or pork butt, which is usually sold in the form of roasts. Raising these cuts breaks down the connective tissue and tenderizes the meat. The hearty ingredients pair well with pork and tug at the primal gut strings of taste. Techniques today are portioning pork, slicing, chopping, skinning and seeding tomatoes, blanching bacon, bringing to a boil, simmering, seasoning, dredging, browning, braising, and adjusting seasoning. So let's start cooking. Okay, let's talk about our mise en place, our ingredients for lesson 13, braised pork and cocotte. First, we're obviously going to need some pork. This is uh, pork shoulder, also known as, uh, as Boston butt or pork butt. This is about three pounds. And um, if we were making the full uh, number of uh, small plates that is described in the description that comes with the video, we would probably use about um, half to two thirds of this. But we're only going to make probably uh, four, three or four of the um, uh, three or four servings, three or four small plates in this uh, 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 video. So we won't need all of this. We'll also need some uh, some olive oil, and we will also need uh, some bacon. This is about uh, let's see, one, two, three, three strips of bacon. You'll need more if you're going to make uh, eight uh, eight small plates. And uh, I always cut. Remember, I've I've said always cut the strips in half to make them more manageable. We'll also need uh, some uh, green olives. These are, are, are green olives that have been pitted, which means they have no pits. And we will need garlic. Today we're gonna be using the peeled garlic uh, from Christopher Ranch, which uh, I get at Whole Foods. And we will also need some uh, flour for dredging the pork pieces. We will need bay leaves. Uh, we'll also need either some Roma or plum tomatoes. Both are roughly about this size and shape. Uh, but, uh, you know, they don't have to be Roma or plum. They could be really any red tomato. In fact, if you have uh, some cherry tomatoes, you know, sometimes people buy packages of cherry tomatoes and there's more tomatoes in there than you're going to eat before they go bad. You could use those as well. We'll also need kosher salt, as we always do, and our pepper mill for pepper. And we will need uh, some red wine, dry red wine. Uh, you don't need a whole bottle. You need probably about a half to three quarters of a bottle for this um, preparation if you make uh, eight small plates. We're make, making less today, so I've got about, uh, about a third of a bottle here. Uh, and um, we'll need some uh, unsalted butter, or as my spell check change it, changes it to, insulted butter. So those are uh, the uh, ingredients for our meats and plus. Uh, let's break now, and I'm going to come back in a few minutes and show you the equipment that we need for this lesson. Okay, before we start talking about the equipment for this preparation, I want to say a word about the wine. Uh, not everyone keeps full bottles of wine at home, uh, so um, they do sell in the grocery store uh, some small bottles that uh, have screw caps, and they often come in a six-pack. You could uh, have those handy for the times when you need wine. Uh, also, uh, I have this little uh, stopper thing that you, where you can use to pump the air out of it. So if you don't finish the bottle of wine, you can pump the air out and keep it in the fridge uh, for a few days. Uh, but also, I want to point out that um, in mm, almost all preparations, almost all preparations, any alcohol that is in the wine or, if, or that's in beer, if we use beer, or in any other type of alcohol that we use in the preparations, it cooks off. And what's left is the flavor, not the alcohol. Okay, so now let's talk about the equipment. Uh, we're going to need a cutting board, as we almost always do. We will need a chef's knife, and we will need to have a slicing knife to uh, slice up the pork. We'll need to have a paring knife. We'll also need to have a saucepan of water. Now I have already on the stove, I have a saucepan bringing some water to a boil. We'll use that for purposes of blanching the um, purposes of blanching the bacon. Uh, we'll also need to have a saute pan for cooking the bacon after, sauteing the bacon after we have blanched it. 
We will need to have some uh, brown paper for purposes of draining the pork after it's been browned. Oh, oh we'll also be using this, this pan for purposes of uh, browning the, uh, the pork. Uh, we'll need the brown paper for, uh, so that we can drain that browned pork. And uh, I've mentioned in a prior lesson, a great source of brown paper is uh, uh, lunch bags, brown, brown paper lunch bags. We'll also need to have two mixing bowls, uh, one to make an ice bath, and the other one will be for uh, mixing up the ingredients. I'll talk about the ice bath when we get to it. Uh, we'll also need to have cocottes. Now, we've used these cocottes in a prior lesson. Uh, you might wonder why we've used this so much. Well, well, one, remember, we're starting with the easy lessons. And braising is easy, okay? It's a great way to get really good results with not a lot of work and with not a lot of preparation. So we're starting off the course with several braising steps. You will have mastered it. You probably mastered it already. Uh, these cocottes are Staub, made by Staub. They're cast iron. Uh, but there are plenty of alternatives out there. I looked on the internet, I found, uh, I just searched for cocottes on Amazon. I found a lot of different choices. Some are made of ceramic, uh, some are made of metal, some are made of porcelain. They just need to be oven safe. And um, they need to be about three or four inches uh, wide. And ramekins possibly, but they're too small for some of the preparations that we're doing. Uh, but you can find a lot of alternatives out there for uh, cocottes. And uh, in many cases, we'll need a lid. These cocottes come with a lid. But um, if you don't have uh, lids, or if you have some type of a similar uh, vessel that doesn't have a lid, you can use aluminum foil to cover them when, uh, when, uh, when you need a lid. We'll also need a little bit of waxed paper, which we're gonna use to uh, butter the um, cocottes. We'll need an underplate. Remember, we always wanna have a warm underplate when we take a hot cocotte out of the oven. So that uh, uh, it, it so that the, the the plate is warm and it doesn't crack when you put the hot cocotte down onto it. Then we will also need a spoon uh, and we'll need a fork and then of course we will need our prep list, which I have here, and I have starred the items that uh, need to be done um, in advance or that need to be done first, and I put a dash next to the items that are done next, and then all the other things are uh, cooking or preparation. So I will, uh, oh, one other thing we need is we need a pot of water. Now I have a pot, I don't know if it's in this shot or not. Uh, let's see, yes, you can see the pot of water on the stove. Bringing that uh, water to a boil, we're gonna be using that for purposes of uh, uh, pe uh, removing the uh, skins from the tomatoes. So I've already put that uh, pot onto the stove. The more water you have, the better, because uh, and when you put those tomatoes in there, it's going to drop the temperature of the water right away. And so the more water you have, the less the temperature drops. I have the pot covered because uh, it, that will bring the uh, water to a boil faster. And uh, so now we're going to break and uh, we'll be back in a few minutes to start cooking. Okay, so here we are at the board. Uh, one of the first things we're gonna do is we're gonna blanch this bacon. So I already have the water at a boil. So we're gonna drop this bacon into that water. We're going to let it simmer Run it to a boil. We're going to let it simmer for 10 minutes. Setting the timer for 10 minutes. Okay. Then we are going to um, make sure that we've brought the, uh, the pork to room temperature. I did that about uh, half an hour ago. Actually, it was probably a little bit more than that because this is a big piece of uh, pork. And also bring the butter to room temperature. So we've already done that. Uh, next thing on our list is to heat the water for the bacon and the uh, tomatoes and to preheat the oven to 300 degrees, which I did just before I turned on the camera. And um, next thing we need to do is we're going to, well, we're simmering the bacon now, and we also need to skin and slice the tomatoes, but I don't think that's hot enough yet. No, we'll have to do that in a little bit. And uh, now, so let's do some other things on the list. We're gonna take these olives and we're going to cut them all in half. Okay, so that's just using the chef's knife. Oops. Using the chef's knife to cut each one of the olives in half. I'm cutting them lengthwise through the, um, 
through the hole at each end where they've been pitted. All right, next thing on the list after cutting the olives in half is to chop some garlic. Now, I will start chopping the garlic on camera, then I will break for a moment because uh, we've already chopped a lot of garlic in the course and there's no need to uh, be watching me chop all the garlic. So there we go, we've halved all of the, all of the uh, olives. Now let's get some garlic. And now, uh, so I didn't talk actually about how much, how many olives we need. So um, again, you need to use your judgment. So we are going to make three cocottes worth of this pork and we're gonna have a nice distribution of olives inside of each one of these. So, you know, there's probably two, one, two, three, four, about five olives, five or six olives uh, per uh, cocotte. And, uh, but again, just look at the size of the vessel that you have and decide how many olives you need in there to have a nice distribution. You don't wanna have, have too much olive, not, not too little, okay? Same thing with the garlic. Uh, let's figure out how much garlic we need. So again, we're doing um, three cocottes worth, and um, I always like to have more garlic than less. Some people don't like garlic as much. We'll cut all the root ends off, as we always do. And then we're gonna start to chop it, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do to chop it is to find a relatively flat side, hold our fingers like this, thumb behind the forefinger, and then slice it. After we get them sliced, we're gonna chop across like this. So I'm going to do that off camera. So we're gonna break, I'll be back in a minute after I've done that. Okay, so here we are, we're back, and I have chopped all of the garlic. And I wanna say another word about uh, garlic and also about judging ingredients. We're now on lesson 13. We've used garlic in a lot of the lessons so far. So you've probably already started to get a, uh, uh, some uh, judgment about when you've used too much garlic or when you've used too little. It should be easier for you now to eyeball how much garlic you may need or of really any other ingredient. And we're gonna put that directly into one of our mixing bowls. And while I was off camera, the bacon, uh, that uh, timer went off. So we um, have um, finished bringing the bacon to a boil and simmering it. And I, I think I misspoke at the beginning. Okay, we're not actually going to slice this bacon, I mean to saute this bacon. We're going to just cut it up as it is. And since we have it out here, we're just going to cut it up. I've got to tell you, I've, uh, in some preparations, I will um, not blanch the bacon uh, first and I'll just saute it. And uh, you know, every time I blanch it, I'm glad I did. Uh, the blanching removes a lot of the salt and I think you get a much more savory taste of the bacon rather than uh, as much of the salty taste. So there we have the bacon. It's nice and uh, chopped into uh, uh, pieces that are, you know, not, not about, uh, about a half an inch wide. Okay, so we'll put that onto back onto the, um, onto the pan. All right, now, uh, oh, by the way, uh, that was the same pan that I had the bacon on at the beginning. Uh, after I put it in for, um, uh, for the uh, blanching, while we're off camera, I cleaned that uh, plate off because we don't want to have uh, the raw bacon in contact with the uh, cooked bacon. Okay, so, um, Let's see, next thing we need, we've had the olives, we've chopped the garlic, we need to prep the bay leaves. Now, again, prepping in a situation like this means lo looking at how big they are, really, and what you might need for your, um, for, your, for your preparation. And sometimes bay leaves are really big and sometimes they're small and broken into pieces. These are like a nice medium size, so I'm just gonna pick out one of these for each one of the um, three cocottes that I'm preparing. This one's a little bit smaller, so I'm gonna use two small ones and two large ones. So that's all we need to do to prepare uh, that, um, to, to prepare the bay leaves. Okay, uh, also to be, to be clear, uh, always think about cross-contamination. Now that bacon's already been cooked, 
But I portioned the bay leaves on a part of the board that we did not use for purposes of uh, cooking the bacon. Always think about that. Uh, we will also need an ice bath. Now an ice bath simply means a bowl of ice and water. And this is used in a lot of different preparations. Today we're going to use it to stop the cooking. Of I used that STOP word and the um, camera went off. So you're going to use this to halt, halt the cooking of uh, the tomatoes uh, after, uh, as we're taking the skins off. Okay, so we've got our ice bath. And we need to prep our wine. In this case, it just means knowing that it's ready. If it's one that has a cork in it, you want to have the cork out of it so it's ready to go when you're ready to go. But all we need to do here is remove this rubber stopper and we're ready to use it. So the wine is prepped. We need to have some flour for dredging. Okay, so we're gonna take our, uh, our dredging plate, which in this case is a, is a sizzle plate. And uh, we're gonna put some flour into that sizzle plate. And you know, it's better to have more than you need because you don't want to go back and have to get some while, in, while you're in the middle of doing your, uh, doing your dredging. Okay, so flour for the dredging. That's ready to go. Okay, now we need to butter the cocottes. So we're going to use our wax paper. We're going to use a little bit of um, butter. And you know how much you need? You, you, We've done this before. You just need enough that you can coat the insides of these cocottes. And, and why do we do this? We do this to make them easier to clean at the end so that food doesn't stick to them. Okay? One more. And I've said this before too. If you start to run out of butter toward the end, go back often go back to the first one that you did because that one often has the most butter in it from when you started and use that butter to uh, finish spread it around so to speak okay so now we have our cocottes are buttered we're going to put those aside for the time being okay check our prep list prep the brown paper now we're going to need about half of this bag. Remember, I said you can really use any brown paper, but try not to use any that has ink on it. Okay, so what we do here is we get our paper, flat, crumple it up. We can finish uncrumpling it a little bit later. All right, our brown paper is prepped. Now let's check on our um, our water to see if we can blanch these, uh, uh, get the skins off these tomatoes. Yes. Okay. So what we're going to do now is take these tomatoes, and you can use your chef's knife, you can use a slicing knife, or you can use a paring knife. What we want to do is we want to score the tomatoes across the bottom. Just a shallow score, so we have an X across the tomato. Okay? And you're doing it at the end opposite where the root was, okay? The smooth end, basically. Then we want to drop these into boiling water. Right? And we're going to let them go for about, oh, about 30 seconds. So I'll often just count that down. I'm looking at the clock now so I can see when that was, all right? And um, we're gonna be removing them with, with really anything you want. You can use a uh, slotted spoon, you can use uh, a pair of tongs like this. Um, and uh, let's see, all right, we're coming up on 30 seconds. little bit longer what's going to happen is the the um, skin is going to start to peel back from that X okay and then we'll be able to just tear it off or pull it off all right let's try again we don't want to go too long because we don't want to cook the tomatoes when we 
drop those tomatoes into our ice bath. Now what I'd like to do before we, no, no, I think we're okay. We're just gonna put this right here on the board. And now we should start to see that the skin is peeling right back from those tomatoes. Yes, very nicely. Now it won't always be perfect. Some of it will be stubborn and wanna stay on there. Drop it back in there because I can feel that those tomatoes are um, a bit warm. I don't really want to be cooking the tomatoes. I just want to uh, have them in there long enough that the skin will pull away. As I said, sometimes they're more stubborn. This area, this part right here is a bit stubborn. There we go. All right. Back in there. Now, good. Get rid of that skin. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take these tomatoes out. I'm going to use the chef's knife and cut them into quarters. Now you might be thinking, well, this is on the same board where we had the bacon. First of all, the bacon was cooked. Secondly, all these ingredients are going to go into the, um, into the preparation. They're going to be in the oven at 300 degrees for um, quite a while. So we don't have to worry about any contamination. Then after we've sliced these in quarters, we're going to take a spoon and we're going to pull the seeds out. Also, we have the bit of the, uh, uh, the root here. We're going to get rid of that as well. We're going to just get all the seeds out of these tomatoes. You can do it pretty fast. Get rid of another bit of the root here. Okay. If you have a few seeds in there, it's not going to make a difference. But the seeds, if you have too many of them, they can add some bitterness to the dish. We don't want that. But a uh, few of them aren't going to really make any difference. And we've got a little bit of the root here. them coarsely okay just run the knife over them a few times good a nice coarse chop we're going to put those uh, in the bowl with the garlic check our prep list. We've skinned, sliced, seeded, and chopped the tomatoes. All right. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to, um, uh, we've also um, sliced the bacon. Next thing we're going to do is portion the pork. Now I have intentionally waited until now to portion the pork. I did all of the other steps that I was going to do on this board before I've been portioning the pork. Uh, because pork does cross-contaminate contaminate, uh, your working surface and uh, we want to make sure that we don't have any of that contamination. Now, would it really make a difference here? Not really because all of this is going to be cooked. 
but it's still best to have uh, clean cooking practices. And what we're gonna do with this is see how it's structured. It's one big hunk of meat, basically. We have a big hunk of fat on the bottom here. I'm not, I don't wanna use that in what I'm preparing. And I can see that this area here is all meat, very little fat. So we're gonna start with that. And we're gonna cut it into about one inch chunks. Now, again, we have three, three um, cocottes to fill. So I've made a couple of slices here. I'm cutting it into chunks that are about one inch square. We have some fat, that's fine. We just don't want to have too much of it, all right? Now, uh, let's look at how, how much we have here. We're doing three, three cocottes. So I'm going to say that uh, we need about this much pork per cocotte. Okay, you can see that that would about fill that up. All right, remember, again, this is a small plate, so it doesn't have to be stuffed full. So we want about that much three times that much, okay? So I think we are going to need a bit more pork. Let's see where we want to get this from. Again, I want to try to get from an area that doesn't have too much fat. We're not going to waste the rest of this pork. I will probably put it in the smoker, make pulled pork out of it. But for purposes of this dish, this preparation, we're going to be more selective about the pieces that we use. Okay, so there we have, looks like a, just a good amount, about three portions that are about equal. And uh, again, you can see each one of those portions will about fill that cocotte. All right, check our prep list again. We portioned the pork. Now we need to season it, all right? So let's, uh, Lay it out on the board here. Take some kosher salt and sprinkle it around. I do kind of a circular motion. Rinse my hand and do the pepper. All right, turn it over. You could also do this in a bowl. We could have done it in the same bowl that we have the uh, garlic and the tomatoes in. In fact, let's do that for the remaining part of the seasoning, all right? There's some more pepper in there. It's about as much as I would have put on the other side of the pork if I had turned the pork pieces over. Put a little bit more salt in there and then we're going to, uh, uh, <laughs> I know why I didn't want to put those in there with those other things, because we're going to dredge them now, okay, so we have to take them back out. So basically I should have done them all on the board, because we're going to dredge them next. All right, so taking them back out of that bowl. Now we're going to take our, uh, our flour, and we're going to get um, another sizzle plate. how much these sizzle, how handy these sizzle plates come in handy, okay? Then we're going to just put some of these pieces into this flour, turn them over in the flour, shake off extra flour, and take them out. Meanwhile, I have heated up the saute pan, and we're going to add some olive oil to that saute pan. How much? Oh, you probably need a couple of, the equivalent of a couple of tablespoons full. Basically what you want is enough that uh, there aren't going to be any dry spots in the pan. Pans are not always perfectly level. They might have some low spots. You don't want any, any, any high spots that, where there's no um, oil. And um, then, you know, enough that maybe that's a sixteenth or so of an inch deep. Uh, around the pieces that you're putting in there. Uh, they are going to, to some extent, they're going to absorb some of the oil. Uh, but if the oil is hot, as it should be when you start, then um, 
you won't absorb as much. And okay, so I've gotten all that done. I'm rushing a little bit because I'm going to try to shorten the video a little bit, and also uh, we um, uh, have the have the pan getting hot. So you can see that it's smoking. Turn on the fan. All right, now we're going to just put some of these pieces in here. That will immediately lower the oil temperature. So you don't want to put too many in there. You have some space between them. All right, so I put probably about a third of them in there. Now I check them with. Um, a pair of tongs. We have our paper here that we're going to drain them on. You want to keep an eye on them. We're not cooking them here in the pan, we are browning them. So as you start to get brown, turn them over. There are going to be some hotter, hotter points in your pan than others. If you get, just get a quick look. You can see here there are some that are a little bit more brown than others. And just let those go for a moment. And let's check and see where we are. We, um, we portioned the pork, we dredged the pork, we're now browning it. See this this oil is already smoking, so we'll add the next batch. Also, we're using olive oil. Olive oil is very good for you, but it has a low smoke point, which means you cannot get it as hot as you can some other oils, like for example, canola oil or avocado oil or grapeseed oil. In in other lessons, we will use uh, other oils. So you can see here we have a very nicely browned uh, piece of uh, pork there. And um, you can also see that it's, if, if you were here, you can see that it's not cooked on the inside. It's still raw on the inside. It's just browned on the outside. And um, this pork is going to go into the bowl with the tomatoes and the uh, garlic where it was before. <laughs> I took it back out. And ready for this next next uh, batch. Now I'm doing this in real time so you can see how long it takes. Well, it doesn't take very long. more pieces left. So I've, in three batches I've gotten all of this pork to be uh, to be browned. So I'm just going to give that another couple of seconds and um, then we will uh, take it out and start the other piece.
We already have that smoking going. So we're going to put in these last pieces. Now I know where my hot spots are in the pan. I know where it's going to get browner faster. You'll have to learn that about your own, your own stove. these pieces while those are browning. Again, get some nice brown pieces there. It doesn't take long to do that browning. It doesn't take long at all. Put those into the bowl. Quick. And about ready to turn these, I can see. I'm turning each one of these individually so that I know that I have the, the, uh, the uncooked side down. And my, and the back here is where I get it, where it's uh, hotter. So I'm moving these pieces around a little bit, trying to take advantage of that. Okay, now. All right, these pieces look good. They didn't take long at all. Now, I'm going to do use a method I believe I used in a prior lesson. It's for both, um, it's for both cleaning the pan and creating flavor in your sauce. First, we'll add water to this pan, so it's going to steam up quite a bit, okay? Put it back down on the stove. I use a wooden spatula, and I scrape, carefully scrape the bottom of the pan while that water is boiling. You could also do this with white wine. You can do it with red wine as well, especially in this particular preparation, which is using red wine. And What we're doing is we're, move, we're, re, we're removing little cooked bits of pork from the pan and flour, uh, which is called a fond, F-O-N-D. And uh, as this reduces, it's going to become more flavorful. And we're going to put that right into the mixing bowl with these other ingredients. Okay? All right, so all the pork is in there now. Let's check our prep list. We've browned the pork and we've drained it. Now we're going to mix the pork and um, the garlic and the tomatoes. And we're going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm mean, sorry, a little bit of uh, olive oil to this mixture. Okay, how much? Well, enough to that when, when we toss this, they're all going to be coated. Okay? We're going to toss them. We're tossing the tomatoes, the garlic, and the pork, okay? Nice, beautiful mixture. All right. Now, we didn't season the tomatoes, so we're gonna use a little bit more pepper and another light sprinkling of salt, and we're gonna mix it up again. Now, because this pork isn't really cooked through, it's only browned, we can't really taste it, okay? So we're just gonna have to um, hope that we have the right amount. I lost a piece of pork there, that's gonna have to go into the garbage. Um, we're gonna have to hope that we have the right amount, but you'll build uh, experience with this over time and eventually you'll, uh, you'll be, as I said at the beginning of the course, a seasoning ninja. Um, now, uh, let's see how we're going over here. So we're down to about, Oh, I'd say about two tablespoons of liquid in that pan. We're going to let it go down a little bit farther, reduce it a little bit more. Meanwhile, we'll check our prep list. We mix the pork, the olive oil, the garlic, the tomatoes, and we season them. Okay? And the next thing we're going to do is fill these cocottes. Let's wipe off our board here. Okay. Cuts on the board. Check on our reduction on the stove. That's what we're doing here. We are reducing. We are reducing the liquid that was in that pan. We deglazed it with water, and then we, we reduced it to um, build up some flavor. We're going to turn that off. Just let it sit there for a moment. All right. So next thing to do is to fill the cocottes. 
going to take this pork and the tomato and garlic mixture and spoon it into these cocottes. I have enough here for maybe one more. So what I'll probably do is go off camera, butter one more cocotte, and come back, and uh, we'll do four instead of uh, instead of three. Okay, so I got a fourth cocotte. I put that extra pork in there. I redistributed it a little bit so we have an even amount in each one. And then we're going to take this fond that we created, and we're going to pour it through a strainer and put just a little bit of this into each one of these. Basically, this was a flavor opportunity. We saw a way to get more flavor by deglazing the pan with water. Could have done it with wine or vermouth, dry vermouth. Saw an opportunity, so we deglazed it, reduced it, and then put that into the pork mixture, right? All right, now what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna add the olives and just scatter them about. We have actually enough olives here for four dishes as well. Try to get them kind of evenly distributed there. All right, uh, next, uh, the bacon. Let's get the bacon on there. Again, we decided how much bacon to use. It was about the amount we thought we'd need for three of these. It turned out that we had just enough for four, really. Good. And then, uh, and then we want to add the uh, wine. So we're going to pour a little wine over each one of these. Basically, just till it's about three eighths inches or so below the rim of the uh, of the cocotte, and then we want to put the bay leaves on top. So we have our couple that are larger, and then we have the two that are smaller. I'm going to need two more because I added added one cocotte. Okay, now. We want to put them in the oven. Now you can put them in there on any kind of a pan. I put them in on a uh, half a sheet pan that uh, has a silk pad mat on it. Uh, you don't have to have that. You can just put them in there on any any pan at all. And we're going to put that in the oven, 300 degrees, 300 degrees on the middle rack. And we're going to come back and check that after 45 minutes. So I am going to set my smart phone timer because it will be with me the whole time. You don't want to set a timer and leave the room and then miss the timer. So if you're setting one for a longer period of time, I recommend using your smartphone. So it's always with you, as mine always is. Check our prep list. We filled the cocottes with the pork and the olives, the bacon, the wine, and the bay leaf. We put them in the oven. We're gonna braise them. Remember, 300 degrees is considered to be a slow oven or a low oven. And, uh, and uh, they're gonna be in there for at least 45 minutes. We'll see how they are after 45. And uh, this is called low and slow. This is braising. Braising, it's usually done with a tougher cut of meat with liquid. And the longer the cooking and the low the temperature and the liquid help to break down the connective tissue in the meat, intensify flavor. And so, um, as I've said in other uh, lessons, it really depends upon your stove, your setup. Uh, you may need more time, you may probably not only less time because we're doing low and slow here. And also, if you go longer with braising, it really doesn't hurt unless, you, um, all, the, unless all the liquid evaporates. Uh, so after 45 minutes, what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, check the liquid if it needs to be replenished, we will replenish it. If it doesn't, we'll leave it the way it is and we'll cover them and let them cook a bit longer. All right, so I'll break, come back in 40, or in less than 45 minutes now. Okay, our timer just went off, so we're gonna check 
Good boy. Uh, let's see how we're doing here. I don't see a lot of bubbling. And we're going to check tenderness of the pork. I think it's still, uh, it's about, I mean, it's coming along, but I think it needs uh, uh, more time. And, and the, the original tent was probably to go for about an hour and a half. We've gone for um, 45 minutes. So what we're going to do now is we're going to cover each one of these cocottes. If you don't have lids, use foil. And we don't want to lose much heat here, so we're going to get them back into the oven. for another 45 minutes and I will come back to you and we'll check them again okay so our timer just went off and I got the cocottes out of the oven let's see how we're doing um, great thing about these uh, Staub uh, cocottes is they have these ribbons on them so you just lift the tops off even though the tops are pretty hot now let's see this pork seems to me to be tender but it is not falling apart as much as I would like so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it back in low and slow it means slow so they've been in there for an hour and a half I think I'm gonna put them in there for another 45 minutes and we're gonna check them at that point so back into the oven and back to see you in another 45 minutes Okay, the timer just went off. It's been another 45 minutes. Let's see how we're doing here. All right. Okay, so they've been in there a total of two and a quarter hours. Let's see how we are doing. Fish out a little piece of the, of the uh, pork here. Oh yeah, it's just, I mean, it fell apart as I picked it up. Uh, let's find another piece here. Yeah, all right, now, look at this. It just comes right apart. Perfect, that's perfect. Okay, that one's gonna be mine, by the way. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the lids and uh, better turn off my ringer so nobody barks at me again while I'm Recording. Okay. Now we're going to remove the bay leaves. Okay. That one must be on the bottom of the wood. Yeah. Okay. Now we want to taste it. This is going to be mine, so I want to taste it. Now I'd say it's a perfect balance. I think it could use a little bit of adjusting of the seasoning. So we're just going to put a little bit of a sprinkle of salt on the top of each one and a fresh twist of pepper okay and I think I had some parsley here freshly chopped so I'm gonna give a little bit of garnish of parsley on top okay there we go so that is Let's check our prep list, make sure we did everything. Uh, now, oh, let's talk about the time. All right, so it was a total of two and a quarter hours. I was planning that it would probably be about an hour and a half. Now, that's 45 minutes difference. All right, so it really depends upon whether your oven is really 300 degrees. It really depends upon whether the, um, what size the chunks of pork are, and also how much liquid is in there. So it turned out it took about 45 minutes longer than I wanted to get the degree of fall apart tender that I wanted. Now you might think, well, well, what am I gonna do if I wanna make this for a dinner party? How do I predict? The thing to do is to start earlier and to allow yourself, say, three hours. If it's done after, say, an hour and a half to two hours, keep it in a warm oven covered until you're ready to serve. Then bring it back up to 300, about uh, 15, 20 minutes before you're ready to serve it. And you don't have to worry really about overcooking something that's braised. You got plenty of liquid in there, it's only going to make the pork even more fall apart tender, so that would be fine. Um, now, so let's do the, uh, the recap. Today we did uh, some portioning of pork. We uh, sliced the um, 
sliced and uh, portioned the pork. Uh, we chopped, we skinned and seeded tomatoes. Uh, we did some blanching of the bacon and uh, we brought that bacon to a boil. Remember, bring to a boil means bring it just to a boil and then reduce the heat so it doesn't boil over. Uh, in this case, we brought it to a boil and then we reduced it to simmering for about 10 minutes. We did some seasoning, we dredged the pork, we browned it, we braised it, and then we adjusted the seasoning at the end. Um, what I haven't mentioned in the past is that uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you can see the photos of the finished dishes, okay? So it's my Instagram is um, Chef's Apprentice Cook Like a Pro. Chef's Apprentice Cook Like a Pro, and you can see the finished dishes. Next lesson coming up is uh, chicken thighs roasted in red miso with honey and garlic spinach. Also, check out the uh, bonus lesson that I posted on cooking knives and uh, knife skills. And finally, please, please don't, uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for listening. Enjoy the dish.